world decrease their nuclear arms? Yeah, it's not the problem with that terrorism as we're talking about it is there's no real deterrence against it. You got guys that want to, you know, blow themselves up when they set mm-hmm. off the nukes. How do you deter that? But but it's listen, but, so- but if, if it's that easy to get your hands on this material, why hasn't it happened? Well, the the, the two the two groups that would be are the most sophisticated and the best funded. And the, and the best organized. They've only been in, in existence for about seven years. But still, seven and, and, years and their is... current incarnation. Yeah, but, you know, uh, how long did it take Al-Qaeda to plan the uh, USS Cole attack or their attacks on the African embassy? Those are very simple attacks. It took them over five years. That took them a long time to plan the World Trade Center. So if you're going to plan a half mm-hmm. a dozen nuclear attacks against the United States, well, well, how long would that take, 20 years? They don't care about the time. And the, uh, but also it's not, uh, Al Qaeda, uh, basically kind of shot its wad, you know, mm-hmm. when it, when it flattened the World Trade Centers, that they got on everybody's most wanted list. Sure. And everybody's afraid of them, including Afghanistan and even Pakistan. And the, the, but these new groups, they're much better funded, much more sophisticated than Al Qaeda ever was. They make Al Qaeda, the Al Qaeda people look like campfire girls. Is it possible that the terrorists do not want to even consider using nuclear weapons because they know that just one nuke detonation that could be traced back to a terrorist group would would finish them? They'd have no ability to regroup. They'd have no ability to get funding. They'd have they'd be out of business. Yeah, and I think that that's I you know I've always. For whatever it's worth, I've always considered uh, these these people to be rational players. Mm-hmm. The whole notion that they're you know uh, you know hydrophobic psychotics, you know frothing at the mouth. I don't. I never saw it that way at no. all. The the nine eleven the you know the nine eleven hijackers are fairly yeah. accomplished people. Well, they when you happen can... to have an ideology that we 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 think is crazy, but that doesn't mean they're crazy. Well, exactly. When you consider that the entire nine eleven fiasco was committed by nineteen people with paper cutters, yeah. paper box cutters, yeah. like come on. Yeah, I, and the... Muhammad Adda had advanced degrees in chemistry and stuff. Like sure, that. you know they they weren't these weren't you know dumb, you know dumb people. I, I think that in the world today, the word terrorist doesn't apply to, like you were saying, the, the, the people that are psychotic, frothing at the mouth, and who just take off and do something without any cause or any consequences. I think that everything is well thought up. And we can see that today, in today's very times, by what's happening in Nigeria with Boko, uh, Boko Haram. You know, there's no nuclear devices there, but here you've got a group of terrorists go in, kidnap nearly two, three, two, what is it, two to three hundred girls? Yeah. And you've got everybody looking for them, and they're not being found. Well, how long did it take the United States to find bin Laden? Yep. Yeah. Well, he, he was being hid, hidden, you know. Yeah, exactly. The, he was the Pakistani yeah. government. So tell me, do you think that nuclear power, uh, a nuclear prol- proliferation is an actual threat? Do you think it'll ever happen? Uh, well, the, the, there's a couple of problems with nuclear uh, power. That, well, yeah, it is a proliferation tra- threat. Uh, that a nuclear power reactor, there's a, there's been a number of studies done on this. Uh, mm-hmm. about Oak Ridge did one, Sandia. If you if if you have a nu- if you have access to the spent fuel rods, a nuclear power reactor, it's just waste. And this stuff is very the the, the the storage of this waste is very very poorly monitored. So it's possible to grab some of those rods. And the um, and if you have the equipment from an old dairy or an old winery, uh, a half a dozen technicians. And this is a low tech operation. They can build a nuclear uh, a bomb fuel reprocessor in about six months, maybe less. One of the Sandys said less. Um, the guy, the techs would have to know what they were doing, but you can, you know, it's all, it's, it's not that hard to do. And the, the um, if you have, an, you know, enough spent fuel rods, it would take one, uh, it, it, it would take uh, one month to reprocess enough uh, uh, bomb grade plutonium to, to power the uh, Nagasaki bomb. So that when you're selling, the, the, behind every 
nuclear state, every nuclear state that went rogue, like Pakistan, Iran, North Korea, whatever, behind every one of those mm -hmm. was a nuclear power reactor. And somebody once said that nuclear power is the training wheels by which the nuclear proliferators and nuclear terrorists, you know, learn how to how to ply their trade. Um, that it, it was something Eisenhower created in '53 when he gave his Adams for Peace speech at the UN, and he uh, he proliferated. He shipped nuclear reactors, nuclear uh, reactor fuel, which is which was weapons usable grade. He shipped that stuff all over the world, and he encouraged other nations to do the same. I mean, the people we complain about Pakistan and Iran's nuclear program. Who do you think sold them their first nuclear reactors? gave the nuclear terrorists the training wheel to build bombs. It was the United States. In today's... Uh, one of those nations sold, sold the nuclear reactors to the Congo. Wow. Tell me, in today's society, is law enforcement capable of detecting a nuclear device threat? Uh, no. The, the, the only way you can really detect it is at the source. Uh. The, 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 one of the many problems is that the, the, the people, people will call in and say this is insane. They, they confuse nuclear, pure nuclear explosive, 90% pure grade. They confuse it like with nuclear waste. Nuclear waste is the most toxic substance on Earth, that if you stand near it, you die. The, uh, on the other hand, the, nu the nuclear bomb grade plutonium, the bomb grade plutonium, and, on, and highly enriched uranium, that those only give off alpha particles. They don't give off gamma rays, which is what kills you. Uh, a little bit of beta, but really not very much. It's insignificant. It's they give off alpha rays. Alpha rays can be uh, stopped by the skin. That you can pick up, you know, bomb, you know, nuclear explosive. With your bare hands. Now, if you have a cut on your hand, you're going to die. And if you breathe it in, you know, or eat it mm -hmm. or something, you'll die. But you can, uh, and you can, it's real easy to get this stuff through um, radiation detectors. That It's been said that if you really wanted, if you had some, you know, some, you know, n real nuclear explosive and you wanted to ship it in, say, through a container ship, that one way to do it would be to hide it in um, a, a container full of toilets, hide it in the toilet casing. There's nothing. That would be completely indetectable at that point. And people, I get phone-ins on this all the time, and people think I'm crazy, but this is really, this is, you know, this is very highly substantial. I, I have endnotes, and my book is The mm -hmm. Nuclear Terrorist, and I have endnotes that corroborate all that. Exxon Nation, our guest this hour is Robert Gleason. He's the author of The Nuclear Terrorist, His Financial Backers and Political Patrons in the U.S. and Abroad. His website is www.thenuclearterrorist.com. So, Robert, what do we do to protect ourselves against nuclear terrorism? Well, well when, uh, when Hillary Clinton was uh, uh, President Obama's uh, Secretary of State, mm -hmm. she said in a WikiLeaks memo, the uh, the, the uh, wealthy Saudis were the number one financiers of Sunni-style terrorism in the world today. That's Al Qaeda, Taliban-style yeah. terrorism. These Pakistani groups, as, as opposed to Shia, and they really are far and away the most dangerous of these t of the terrorist groups in the world. And the uh, uh, and as you know, 15 out of the 19 uh, uh, 9/11 hijackers were Saudis. The, the, there was a congressional report done where. The, the, uh, the the White House blacked out 28 pages of the report because it, it describes different kinds of Saudi involvement with the 9/11 hijackers, and it was embarrassing to the Saudis. So the Bush people blacked it out. Um, having you know, so the this this is clearly this is they're really they really are a problem. They bankroll and continue to bankroll Pakistan's nuclear program. Well, the Obama administration has been and is continuing to try to set up a deal whereby the American firms and even some foreign firms mm -hmm. can sell the uh, the Saudis two, two nuclear reactors. And, wow. you know, it's up to me. I wouldn't sell them a single pistol. They're, they're very eager to sell um, nuclear stuff to India. I wouldn't sell. You know, uh, the, the, um, the, when, when Donald Rumsfeld in his private life before you know, before he became uh, George W. Bush's uh, defense secretary, mm -hmm. um, you know.
know, he worked with us uh, as a board director for a Swiss uh, contracting firm that that attempted to and contracted to sell uh, to sell two nuclear reactors to North Korea. Now the sale didn't go through, but they they did they tried very hard and they they had some some understanding at one point. Um, Dick Dick Cheney and Condoleezza Rice, you know, did a lot of stuff about how dangerous Iraq was. Yeah, you remember when they said that. Uh, they, 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 when talking about whether Saddam had a nuclear weapons program, that each of them said, Condi Rice specifically said, "I don't want the smoking gun evidence of Saddam's nuclear pro- nuclear weapons program to be a mushroom cloud." You know, all that, and the um, and yet in their private lives, the Dick Cheney was the CEO of Hal Burton, which did business with. Uh, Saddam trying to rebuild his oil oil industry and oil infrastructure after because after you know Desert Storm. Sure. And uh, Condi Rice was a board director at a, a Chevron, which was a major oil customer of Saddam's. And uh, the, the the Hal Burton was also trying to build up uh, Iran's nat- natural gas industry. Unreal. I mean, t- people. The reason we don't do anything is there's too many important, powerful people that are. Profiting in their private lives, profit or, or the companies they work for, profit off of these uh, these rogue states. All right, Robert, stand by. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exxon Nation. Robert Gleason is our special guest. His website is www.thenuclearterrorist.com, and uh, Robert and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go bag. Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.wentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. All right, for all you hockey fans around the world, we just uh, received something from our newsroom saying that the New York Rangers have just eliminated the Montreal Canadiens 
from this year's attempt.